rattled me on my way up here. Um, the, the first thing I want to share with you is that I'm also a local guy. I'm third generation in this region, and the fondest memories I have from my childhood are going to spring training games and watching the Mets and the Cardinals, or going to St. Peter Coldwater Beach. I mean, that was the perfect day for me. The perfect spring was going to both, and that was the perfect summer day for me was going to the beach with my buddies at Coldwater and St. Pete. Uh, which is why I was so excited about getting to come back here. My wife and I moved our three young children back here from Phoenix, Arizona, where I worked for the Diamondbacks. And we thought there might be some comparisons in the market size and the, and the approach, but the opportunity to work for Stuart and Matt and others was really too great to pass up. And the chance to enjoy the quality of life that you can enjoy in St. Pete, Clearwater, Water Tampa was too much for us to pass. So I tell you that because it was significant and important when we came back to make every effort to be as powerful and personal as we could be in our approach. And we tried to meet every community leader, corporate leader, civic leader we could in this area with a very simple question. If you were us, how would you do it? And we got a lot of great feedback about community organizations to evolve ourselves in, things we could do with the ballpark. But the overwhelming theme was just win. If you win, everything will take care of itself. And while that hasn't worked out the way we might have wanted it to, we have continued to go after those community and civic opportunities as aggressively as we could. I'm extremely proud to tell you on behalf of our organization that we are leaders with the biggest and most important or nonprofit organizations in this area, whether it's leading the campaign for the Attaway or the Sunco. Our big brothers and big sisters, where over 35 of our employees volunteer as mentors or bigs. The Ronald McDonald House, USF and USF St. Pete, the St. Pete Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Tampa Bay Partnership, and the list goes on and on. Even more significantly, though, the Race Baseball Foundation, and corporately as well, we're giving away millions of dollars every year through grants and other programs. But the money is, I wouldn't call it the easy part because it's significant, but it's only one step. The bigger and more powerful part is that we choose to partner with the organization and causes that matter to us. We announced last year a million dollar scholarship program with the Helios Education Foundation that will turn into $2 million over the next five years that will create mentors as well as scholarships throughout Tampa Bay for 250 or 300 kids. Those are significant things. The Reading with the Rays program, hundreds of thousands of kids in a five county area will go into their public libraries because the summer reading list from their schools or what that program is based on and the read the rate of the ballpark. And whether they get all the way home or not, the tens of thousands of kids who even choose to walk into a library and ask to read a book that never would have is unbelievable. And maybe the most meaningful one is right in the backyard of our ballpark in Campbell Park. There were significant issues that the folks who worked for our team, who are part of the race family, brought us and said, we need your help, we need your support in this area. So we launched the dugout club, the number of our players in the rec centers. Um, there's a youth program that we host at the ballpark. But the one that I think is the most interesting and the most powerful is the walking school bus. One of the things the community told us through the United Way and through JWB was families in our community, yeah, right in the shadow of our ballpark, were scared to allow their kids to walk to school. And so what the walking school bus does is through volunteers and through paid staff is provide a safe way for those kids to get to school. And truancy rates have gone way, way down. And the families in those communities are also being introduced to services. So I share those couple of examples with you to tell you that we're making this effort. It will continue to not just fund, but to be hands-on and to be head-to-head -head with our community and be as powerful an influence as we can be. The final thing that I share with you is that our entire organization has this commitment. Uh, we have an employee, the community outreach team, ECOT is the acronym, and it's become a point of pride for our employees to be members. 6,000-hour volunteer hours last year by our staff. So it's a big deal. The leaders in that way as well. And again, any time that our staff can be out there hands-on with it. So I'll leave you with, it's our privilege and our honor to not just realize that we have an opportunity, but we have a responsibility to be great community citizens. And we're going to take that energy and continue to push forward in the same way. We'll try to make as many corporate relationships as we can. So thank you for the time today. I hope it created a little insight into how we approach both our business and our place in the community. And we'll ask Michael Paul to come up next, please. Uh, hey, Mark. Uh, Michael Call, you might be thinking him again, but I'm back. Um, <laughs> Good to see you. Yes, too. Um, we're really, really happy to have this opportunity today, and I just want to reiterate that um, what Mark and Matt Stu mentioned, we take tremendous pride in the work that we've done with this franchise over 
the last seven or eight years uh, on the field, off the field, in the community at large. And uh, they're well-worn issues now, so I'm just going to briefly touch on some of the attendance and demographic issues that, um, that we face. They're issues that were brought up um, you know, a number of years ago in various different reports. Uh, a number of you have the, the privilege of serving on the commission for a while and have heard them before, but it's worth just reiterating. Um, we have been winning for the last five years. It's a real privilege and winning consistently. And even as that has occurred, um, attendance has trended downward. We were 26 in attendance in 2008, the year we went to the World Series, um, with an average of about 22,000 plus. Um, we were last in attendance in Major League Baseball last year with slightly over 19,000 people uh, coming per game. Uh, every other team over that period that saw a meaningful uptick in performance over the last five years, so whether it's Cincinnati or Oakland or Baltimore, uh, Washington uh, or Texas, saw a similarly meaningful uptick in attendance. Uh, we are kind of the outlier in that. Um, you, you may have read, we, we mentioned this last week, that Texas, which is probably the team that is most comparable to us in terms of attendance over the last five years, uh, in terms of multiple playoff appearances, uh, knocking on the door in the World Series, but not quite getting through. Um, they were 25th in 2008, the year that we were 26th. Um, mm -hmm. Since then, we've dropped to last and made a third in every baseball in the world. Um, so all that has occurred at the same time, as is not mentioned, we've made fairly significant commitments to marketing the team, creating um, an environment uh, where, where fans feel like they can have a great experience, where they're getting more, frankly, than just the, the, the game on the field, whether it's giveaway items, whether it's uh, bringing food in, whether it's the concerts. Um, they're all things that you know take a lot of energy, a lot of money, make it not quite even an apples to apples comparison when you look at these attendance numbers. Um, and all contribute to us being ranked as uh, one of the not the most affordable team in all professional sports. Um, I'm not pointing out these facts to dwell on, on the negative, uh, but to really to highlight the challenges we face um, in our collective desires for the long-term future of baseball here. Um, there are challenges that were addressed head on with the ABC Coalition report, um, which was released, I believe, uh, almost three years ago now. Um, it was commissioned almost five years ago by then safety Mayor Baker. Um, and those issues haven't gone away. If anything, they will even larger for us today. Um, you know, the Kemp Bay area, it's relatively large. It's beginning to see real growth again. Um, but it's still smaller than most major league baseball markets. It ranks in the bottom half of most major league baseball markets on most of the key demographic indicators that you need to support uh, a business of our, of our size and our type, whether it be um, you know, the population to franchise, the number of uh, mean household income, um, you know, number of employees within uh, a radius of the, of the ballpark, all these stats that sort of repeated ad nauseum. Um, it's, it's a challenging market. It's one that we think and uh, believe very strongly can be a successful major league baseball market, but it's one that you have to get everything right. And one of the major issues we face and compounding these issues is the location of our building. Um, putting aside the age of the truck and the lack of the retractable roof and all the other things that people kind of look at other ballparks around the country and say, boy, it would be nice to have all these bells and whistles. Putting all that to the side, we have a fundamental location problem. And it's one that we frankly didn't realize was quite as acute as it is five, six years ago, because as Stu mentioned, it was before the team had started winning, and everyone had told us, if you win, you'll solve a bunch of problems, and we thought our gap would be, okay, we'd be a 2-3, 2-4 in the trough, and that last piece would be a 2 7 2 eight, which is sort of the situation that a lot of uh, teams that go ballparks have been in, you know, the Twins and teams like that. Um, that's not the situation we're dealing with. We have a fundamental location problem. Um, we have less than a quarter of the area's population within a 30-minute drive of our building. Um, most similarly sized major league baseball markets have at least half of the population within that same radius. Um, we have about 650,000 people in the drive. The next lowest in the baseball, so number 29 is Pittsburgh with 1.1 million people, so they're almost twice the, the catchment area we have in there 29. Um, uh, there are eight current AAA clubs. These are AAA clubs that don't have a major league baseball team in their market, so we're not talking about the Pawtuckets and teams that happen to be 30 minutes away from their parent club to have a larger population catchment area within 30 minutes than we do. Um, and as we know, the proximity to employment is much better. Um, we love downtown St. Pete. Downtown St. Pete's our home. Uh, we, and I personally, put a lot of effort five or six years ago into believing that it could work in that location. Um, but the reality is it's the fourth largest employment center in the region. 
Um, and getting to some of those season ticket issues is at the heart of it is the fact that we just don't have that many businesses that are located proximate to where our ballpark is located, uh, besides the population. So, you know, this is just really scratching the surface on the deep dive we need to do. And, and really what we've been pushing for for the last number of years to, to build on the work of the ABC Coalition is to, to get under the hood of this and understand what is the right what is the right place in the region? What's the ideal place to, to, to make the type of investment of time and money um, and resource, not just for us, but for the, for the community at large, um, to ensure the long-term viability of baseball for you know, 50, 100 years, as we talks about. Um, you know, these stats aren't a knock on the area. It certainly isn't diminishing the contributions that were made by the residents of, of Pinellas County and the citizens of St. Pete. And, and putting their, their hearts and their, their money and, and, their, and their time into, into bringing baseball here, or in the case of the residents of the gas plant area, um, uh, vacating their site, even though that predated baseball still, there's that legacy there on that site. Um, and it absolutely doesn't indicate a lack of appreciation for our fans. Uh, you know, we have committed everything we have to this franchise, and as Stu mentioned, the, the appreciation of the fans and the fans that we do have is it's, it's the most gratifying part of being associated with this team. But to, to build on that and continue to, to keep this club <coughs> viable for the long term, not the short term, but the long term, you know, we need to confront these basic facts where retail business effectively, and we are dealing with some very, very challenging numbers on that, on that front when you look at it. Um, moving beyond the demographics and the attendance issue, in, in terms of sort of the, the, the rub we've got in of not moving this issue along, you know, there's a cost of inaction that's not just about baseball. Um, and it's not just about funding or not funding a ballpark and possibly losing, you know, a cent of the bed tax if we don't do something soon. I mean, all those things are important things that sort of give this issue a sense of urgency. But, you know, I think we need to focus for a moment on, on a piece of what we presented five years ago that got completely lost amid the, the, the discussion of whether a ballpark belonged on the waterfront of St. Pete. And that was the redevelopment potential on the Trout County Field site, which was really you know, more than half of what sort of animated our, our first look at the stadium was that we were sitting on, frankly, an enormous piece of land in a, in a rapidly growing downtown that had real value, still has real value, um, and that, you know, frankly, was lined up. Um, you know, the debt service and, and the operating obligations for the public at the Trout are substantial, but they really pale in comparison to what can come in terms of the property tax generation, the sales tax generation, um, and the, the job generation by putting that land to a more productive use. Um, I point you to not an analysis we did, but an analysis the city of St. Pete did in 2008 when they were going through the process of our theme the Trop. Um, you know, they, they estimated the site can generate tens of millions of dollars of property taxes and, and other taxes annually. Um, so, you know, that doesn't include the value of selling the land, it doesn't include the value of, of jobs and, uh, and economic opportunity being brought there. And, you know, it's, it's not for us as a baseball team necessarily to, to be banging the, the drum about this, but it is important to recognize that there is a larger issue going on here that you know, will not get solved by saying it's okay to just wait this thing out until 2027. There is a tremendous opportunity cost that ticks by every day with not doing something with that piece of land. Um, you know, keeping us, you know, basically, you know, handcuffed, for lack of a better term, to the trough, uh, you know, not only doesn't do anything for us, it's not doing anything for the taxpayers of this county or for the city of St. Pete, frankly. And, you know, we really want to try to advance this, as you said, to try to figure out what's the, what's the best solution for everyone involved. Um, so we can have a productive discussion and a frank discussion and, and, and move this forward for everyone. So, with that, I'll, I'll hand it back to Stu. And Michael, let me ask you one question before we go. Just on the attendance, you mentioned an average attendance of around 22,000, and that was in 2008. something like that. And that's decreased to something around 19. 19 too. So your overall attendance has decreased. I thought I read that overall our, attendance increased, but less our than Our overall attendance, I think, trended up slightly in 2009. Flat in 2010 has been down for the last two years. So overall, overall attendance is dead. Overall attendance is 2010. Okay. 